I'm sharing my system with you guys for how I create all kinds of monsters in just seconds. You can homebrew a monster on the fly when your players go off the rails because we all know that happens. Or you could take existing monsters and take those stat blocks and spice them up with extra abilities to make them more memorable, more scary, and more fun to play for yourself. Or you can use this simple one-page system for your game prep to make your life easier and not take so long to try and homebrew up monsters or think about how you're going to take this combat to the next level. The name for this system to be able to build any kind of bad guy is called build a Baddie. It is a simple one page table with tons of different abilities all sorted into very simple categories that you can grab and go to on the fly in just seconds. Time out. This monster building system that I've used for years now has been heavily inspired from Dale Kingsmill who said that she used this chart on the back of her DM screen how she just quickly builds bad guys and it blew my mind. It's like build a bear but for baddies. She has a great channel full of different inspirational ideas, so make sure you go check her out down in the description. And that's also what I hope I do here on this channel for you guys, is give you guys ideas that you can take and run with yourself. Because now I've been refining this system for four years, and I'm ready to show you guys how I made it and how I use it in action. I got a bunch of examples for you. But if you don't want to build a system like this entirely from scratch, then stick around. I'll show you how you can get your hands on my system for yourself. Or if you're a patron of mine, you've already had this for a while. Here we go. So here's how this table's laid out so I can look at it on the floor and pick from it real quick and you'll see what I'm talking about it has five different rows for strength dexterity monstrous things caster type things and a boss and it has three different columns for offense defense and utility so if your players are fighting some kind of crazy monster and it's super deadly then you would go to the monster row and the offense column maybe your players picked a fight with some huge hulk of a man that's randomly in a tavern somewhere you would go to the strength row and the defense column maybe this random guy has a bunch of bandit type bodyguards that want to be able to protect them so you go to the dexterity row and the utility column. So now instead of having to scramble around and come up with a bunch of homebrew monsters and flip through pages of a book, no, no, no. You just take these abilities and pick and choose them for what feels right for those types of enemies. Or you can use this to enhance pre-existing monsters. Let's say you have a bunch of gnolls that you're fighting and you want to give one of them you describe to be super strong and much larger than the others. So you go to strength offense column, give them some stuff there. The other ones, there's two of them that are really fast and quick. Go to the dexterity, defense, anywhere and just give them some different cool stuff and maybe there's a caster in the back so you go to the caster column and you can do whatever you want with this thing and sprinkle in these extra little abilities on the fly or beforehand and depending on how you run your games as a dungeon master maybe you like to not prepare as much and just kind of go on the fly so this is perfect for you but for myself if i do have things planned out and things are going according to plan and they're not off the rails i still use this chart a lot to look look through and get inspiration for different abilities from or i just look at the chart and one of the things on the chart makes me think of something else to make and another huge bonus tip that I just thought about is you don't have to use this chart only during the first round of combat. Once combat's happening, especially if you're on your heels and this is random and you're having to kind of scramble on the fly, you don't have to lock in these abilities. Let the first round of combat go on, the initiative order is happening, let the players start going, and as the players are going, thinking about what they want to do, start looking behind your screen at this chart and think about what you could add to these different monsters' abilities. Maybe your big strong enemy is getting messed up, so on the fly you look at this strength table, go to the defense, and see what kind of options you have. Or maybe this big scary thing threatening monster isn't so scary and threatening so whenever it reaches half health it enrages it could deal more damage take less damage or unlock certain abilities that didn't have access to before i could do a whole video on how to make these adjustments on the fly because this would be an entire separate video but this chart hopefully gives you some help in creating monsters whether it's on the fly or beforehand but like and comment on this video if you do want to see something like that but you're not cheating as a dungeon master if you add on these extra abilities on the fly because you could have done it beforehand but maybe you didn't have a beforehand and this whole thing's on the fly so you're coming up with it out of nowhere anyway. Nobody is a perfect dungeon master and can perfectly balance the perfect combat every single time. So you're going to have to be ready to adjust. But again, that's a whole nother video. So here's how we're going to do this. I'm going to take this chart and give you a few examples off the top of my head of different things that I would think to use it for. And then I did a community post a few days ago where I asked you guys to give me a bunch of monsters and I would homebrew them within seconds. So I haven't looked at them yet. I'm going to take them and do it on the fly. Then we'll talk about some DM tips to use this thing beforehand to actually prepare and do some game prep. Time out. As usual, I want to make sure all my videos provide you guys with value and I show you tips and tricks on how to make your D&D life easier. All these things we've been talking about are things that I did myself and I've practiced myself, so I want to show you guys how you can do it for yourself and create your own table, add your own extra abilities in there. Here's how you can get your hands on it. The only way that I'm able to do this whole YouTube thing and put as much into it as I can and hopefully have this thing be more in the future is my supporters over on Patreon. I have a bunch of different reward tiers with cool stuff on there, but the biggest thing that we've been doing recently is monthly homebrew PDFs. Each of them have a different theme and the month of 
of March is monsters. Each PDF has three different tiers with a bunch of different stuff on it. So in tier one, you get this PDF, this entire table of what we've been talking about here. And you get a massive list of over 100 different enemy abilities you can add into any enemies. And this is what I would use for game prep. It's a huge list that's sorted by categories. I try and give my patrons a ton of value. So you get all of that that I've been working on for years for just five bucks. Each of these monthly PDFs stay on my Patreon for two months at a time. So when you join, you actually get two PDFs at the same time. So this PDF will be all of March and April. And at the end of April, it goes away into the vault. And if you're watching this video way in the future, there'll be links down in the description for where you can get it. But the best way and the cheapest way is always going to be early access through Patreon. For this monstrous March PDF, I also have the tier two being a bunch of different monsters that I've made from scratch, including witchery monsters that I've already done a whole video on, some with villain actions, but really how I've homebrew monsters and take something like a normal giant ape and actually turn it into something big. But I'll be doing a whole video on that too. And tier three, also I should say every tier you go, you get all the previous tiers from below that. But tier three is going to have four different monstrous subclasses, including a druid that can shape shift and customize its shape shift forms into a bunch of different monstrous abilities. Okay, now let's put this table to use. So real quick, I'm going to pick a random spot in this table and think of a monster that might have that or that I might assign that to, whether it's beforehand or on the fly. So under strength and utility, there's an ability that heals you if you're below half health at the start of your turn. If you want to take this and run with it, you can just have them always have this effect that they constantly get healed, like a regeneration type of effect. But how much healing do you do? I purposely did not put like 1d8 amount of healing in here because I want you to be able to use this system in any monster. And it, that really depends on how difficult this thing is. So if I'm finding a low levels, I'd probably have it be just 1d8, something simple like a cure wounds comparable to. And as you get higher and higher, it might be 2d8s, 3d8s or something crazy where they're really going to have to try and stop this thing from healing itself, whether it's some creative use of cantrips that your players know. This is kind of getting into another tip here. But if your player has something like Chill Touch, that cantrip would be amazing versus this creature because just using it would stop it from healing 3d8. So it's effectively kind of doing 3d8 damage on top of whatever else it does. Now you just made that player feel cool by creatively using a cantrip that's usually not that good. Under the monster section, under offense, there's a bleeding effect that I've used many times in a bunch of monsters that are kind of scary or fangs or whatever. But you have a bleed effect that's attached to their attack that they deal 1d4 damage at the top of that player's turn. If that player wants to stop the bleeding, they either have to make a DC 15 medicine check or receive any type of healing to close the wound. Now my default homebrew rule for this is you can only have one bleed on you at a time. But if you want to kind of amp things up, make it crazy, have a pack of these things or one that has multiple turns, you can have this bleed stacked where they're taking 2d4, 3d4 damage at the start of every turn. For the caster section under defense, I see a shield of temporary health and that's all it says. But my mind just even just right now while I'm filming this just started running with it. I think of it a creature that has a reaction to be able to shield an ally so that any any creature that they are fighting with they can reaction shield and shield for 2d8 health. Or would you take that and dial it up? This is probably what I would do is it's an aura around the caster of maybe it's 30 feet, 60 feet. Again, there's so many things to tweak here and you can do this on the fly as well. So I'm saying 60 feet, any ally of theirs within 60 feet of them constantly if they're attacked gets an aura of 1d8 temporary health so everyone's attacks are being reduced by 1d8 or maybe even 2d8 to where this creature should be killed first or if you don't want to roll so many dice maybe i would just have it be a simple minus five to use that resistance mechanic we talked about the absolute resistance and every creature within its aura whenever a player attacks it deals five less damage than it would or maybe 10 less damage if you want to really dial this mechanic up or if it's a higher level gameplay now we're going to the comments kbz wants to see the great desert drake from the mandalorian all right let's go I got my PDF pulled up right here. And the first thing my eyes went to is monster and strength. For the record, I'd also give this thing tremor sense because it's burrowing through the ground and stuff. But for the monster thing, swallow a creature. For sure, this thing would be able to swallow it. I have a whole swallow mechanic, which is on this thing too. Any creature inside would have to deal a certain amount of damage to trigger a constitution saving throw to see if it's regurgitated or the friends on the outside could deal a higher amount of damage to a certain spot, maybe even if they roll at disadvantage to hit a certain spot. Lots of different things you could do there to try and trigger that same effect. There'd also be some sort of acid damage happening to that player inside the stomach every round. Then on the monster section over on the utility now, I see the burrow speed plus a bonus action burrow. And why not grab something from every single category? I'm going to take from the defense category of this monster thing. I'm going to give it the glancing blow armor class. And what that means is this thing would be easy to hit. So I don't want to have having it have an armor class of like 20 or something doesn't really make sense to me because they should be able to hit it. But what I've done before, done a whole video on this too, I'd give it an armor class of 12 to 16. So if they hit 12 or 16, they hit it, they deal damage, but it's half 
damage. So anything 11 or lower does not hit it. 12 to 16 hits it at half damage and 17 deals full damage. Again, this would all depend on whatever level it is or how difficult you want this thing to be, but giving it a range of a glancing blow armor class lets you deal half damage to it so it still feels like you're hacking this thing down. And there you go. In just a few seconds, I took the Desert Drake from the Mandalorian, scanned through the monstrous abilities, grabbed one from each category, and you're good to go. Dom Maniti says, a team of circus performers slash trapeze artists defending their circus. This would be an epic terrain style. I'd have trapeze artists swinging overhead, swinging down, grappling targets, flinging them into the air. That's crazy. Which makes me think of things like dexterity to where they don't take opportunity attacks as they're swinging on by. Maybe deflect missiles from monks. They can catch projectiles and throw them back. Sorry, I'm getting carried away. That's under the dexterity defense section. Under the dexterity utility section, I see guided strike and one person of the circus would make a strike on the person granting the next one advantage and they could like combo together. And my eyes just scanned through caster real quick and I picked up a blur illusion mirror image type of person to where this one caster in the center or high up onto the top of the circus circus tent or whatever is casting buffs on all their allies to blur them and make them look like there's more. Maybe they create illusory walls of fire that look like they're surrounding the players and they get scared because there's so much fire around them, but it's all an illusion. So there's a couple examples that you can literally do on the fly, but another way, and the, and the really the main way that I use this chart is if I know a fight's coming up and I'm trying to do some game prep and I don't have a lot of time to really like try and flush out brand new stuff that's not on this chart, or really look at this chart and have that inspiration, like I talked about with the temporary shield turning into some aura or something, just scanning through these gives me so many ideas of what I want, and if I don't see it on the chart, or if I start sparking some ideas about grapple throwing people or whatever, you can take and run with it. Think about whatever encounter you have that's coming up and what type of things are there. And as you scan through this chart, you'll be able to pick out and just start adding on different homebrew abilities onto completely homebrew monsters or pre-existing stat blocks. Time out. Dale Kingsmill. I can't say this enough. She's been one of the biggest influences to me in all of YouTube and her videos are very different than anyone else out there. She has a very refreshing and insightful approach to the game that kind of shakes some parts of it up. Cool travel systems, cool ways to handle potions and healing, lots of stuff. Her ideas have inspired me to take and run with so many different kind of ideas that have led to a much higher quality of life for my games and more enjoyable experiences for my players. So if you're watching this, thank you, Dale. And I only hope I can try and get that inspiration out there to some of you guys too. So again, a link to her channel will be down in the description. So if you guys want to support what I do here, get your hands on this PDF and a lot, a lot more coming in the future. Click right here to join Patreon. Click right here to check out some other videos. And until next time, stay creative and think outside that box. Peace.